Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today we're going to be looking at refurbing the classic DMG Game Boy. Now I picked all this up at a flea market on the weekend for only $20 Canadian, which works out to about 15 US. And honestly, this Game Boy is in excellent shape. Other than the screen problem that we're going to look at a little later, the Game Boy is hardly discolored at all. There's no scratches, no physical defects with the Game Boy itself. So this is really an awesome pickup on its own for only $15. However, when you see what I got thrown in for the same amount, it's actually a really insane deal. I got the rechargeable old school Game Boy battery, meaning that you can actually play on direct current without any batteries, and you can actually charge this to play the, the Game Boy without having it plugged into the wall. You, I also picked up an old school magnifying glass slash front light. So this here takes four AA batteries, but this is what front lights, look, front lights looked like before mod kits came out. And lastly, the guy even threw in the same deal, but for the Game Boy Color. Now we're gonna look at this in a separate video, but this is just to show you, I got all this for only 20 bucks. So sometimes when you keep an eye out, uh, you can really get some crazy deals. And the reason the guy was selling it for so cheap, and now you should see on the screen uh, the Game Boy I got, which is the Game Boy on your uh, right, and versus a Game Boy that is in perfect shape, the screen. As you can see, there's some, there's some vertical lines missing on this Game Boy screen. And we're gonna look at fixing that today because it actually is a pretty easy fix to fix vertical lines on a old school DMG Game Boy. So we're gonna look at what we need to do that, which is actually pretty simple. You're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna be using my universal kit here. The reason why is basically this was before Nintendo started using game bit drivers. So the lucky part is you'll only need a Phillips head screwdriver and maybe a really, really small flat head later on, which we'll look at down the road. You're gonna need a soldering iron with some solder. And just in case your front lens falls up off, cause sometimes with the uh, glue getting old and dry, when you're taking the screen out, you'll see your, your front lens might fall out or might start detaching on sides. I recommend having some double-sided tape in case you need to glue that lens back in. It's easier to use double-sided tape if ever one day you wanna actually take it out to swap it for a glass lens or if you scratch it to just replace the lens itself. And of course, to finalize, to make sure we put the Game Boy all back together, we're going to need a Game Boy game. Now, I pre-tested the system. It's perfectly fine. It reads the games. I gave it a shot of WD-40 in the cartridge slot because it, it, it sometimes had a little bit of trouble reading games. And now we're 10 out of 10. It reads games every time, first try when you pop them in, as long as the game is in good shape, obviously. So without further ado, let's start by taking this Game Boy apart, looking at the problems on the inside and seeing how we can fix that screen. Oh, and by the way, if it's an easy fix, because I actually don't remember exactly where it is on the board, we might actually swap out the LED as well on the battery light. The reason why is because the LED is not working on this one right now, it's showing you that the Game Boy is actually on. If it's an easy fix, if the placement doesn't risk damaging anything else on the board, I'll show you guys how to do that as well. And maybe we'll even swap it out for a better color than red. So without further ado, like I said, let's get to pay taking this Game Boy apart. So I did make a tiny mistake in part one. Uh, this Game Boy is actually using tri-wing screws. There were two generations of the original DMG and the only thing that really changed is the type of screws that Nintendo started using. And this one is one of the later generation where they actually did start using the tri-wing screws to prevent people from taking the Game Boys apart without specialized tools. So you will need a tri-wing screwdriver in some cases to take apart an original DMG. Now that we have the screws out, you're gonna pull the Game Boy apart and you're gonna have a ribbon cable right here that you're gonna to wanna to disconnect to really get the screen, the front section with the screen disconnected. Now you just need to pull, there is no security tabs and in this generation of Game Boy and it will take a tiny bit of force, especially if this Game Boy has never been opened before. Next, 
we're going to need to once again take some screws out. This time it is Phillips heads on the inside. So you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws to take out to be able to remove the front motherboard and get access to the screen. Okay, so now with the screws out, it's time to get the screen free. Now, the board's going to pull everything from the speaker down here to the screen. Now, what you're going to have to do, if this is the first time you're taking it apart, some are going to be harder to take apart than others. This one's actually pretty easy. You just have to wiggle it. Now, if it's giving resistance, you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to damage or crack the screen. You're just going to want to wiggle the PCB grab the frame and wiggle, put pressure on the frame to get the screen free. This one was a pretty, a really easy example. And here we do go, we have access now fully to the screen. Okay, so as we're prepping this next step, you're gonna wanna turn on your soldering iron and turn it up to about 325 degrees so that it's nice and hot by the time we need to use it. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bottom section that you see here of the Game Boy, and you're going to reattach the screen to it after freeing it from the front of the casing. And what I recommend, just to make sure that you don't have to get any shorts, put a piece of paper or some kind of any material that will basically prevent it from shorting against the bottom of the board and either insert your batteries or plug in your power source. Next, turn the Game Boy on and make sure that the screen is contacting. And I already did it, but you wanna make sure that your contrast is at the maximum like this so that you can see the screen uh, fully dark. Next, this is when you're going to need a flat, a very, very small flat head screwdriver. The reason why is because we're gonna have to pry off just the end of this little bar here and remove it. Now in this case you see there's some double-sided tape here that was holding that bar down. It's important that you remove it because we're going to be applying the soldering iron and you're not going to want to melt this tape into the ribbon. It can cause some problems later on if you do that. So you're going to want to free a little bit of it. and pull it off. Now don't be scared if the lines increase like you might have seen just happened. It's normal that this happens when you're at this state. The reason why is because that little piece of rubber was actually useful for applying pressure to this cable, keeping the solder points in contact and helping that actually the screen doesn't have this problem. Now it, isn't, it wasn't a very efficient solution, but that's the one that Nintendo with, went with back then. So if you turned your soldering iron on, it should be nearing the point where it's at the right temperature. So we're about to, ready to get started on uh, working on our screen. Okay, so now that you have your soldering iron nice and hot, you're gonna wanna thin it, thin it up. Thinning the solder iron is gonna help transfer the heat to the ribbon and actually make it come out more evenly. Now what we're going to do is you're going to go to the sections that are affected and what you're going to do is you're simply going to make tiny circles and you're going to see as you see here the lines are just going to start reappearing. Now if they don't reappear at first it's okay it can happen and actually some of them will only reappear once the solders cool down. Now in this case, if you like me, you're getting some solder that's residue that's staying on the ribbon. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna clean it up later with some with a wick. 
but this basically means that unfortunately my soldering iron wasn't warm enough yet which is why the solder started sticking to the ribbon rather than staying on the iron here at the edge it's always a little tough And you're going to want to work like that till you're sure that you have all your lines working consistently. So there we go. Now that I got my iron hot enough, like you saw, I was able to clean off really easily the solder. If there's a little bit of residue left at the end, it's really not a problem. It's just going to help you if ever you need to go back in and do it again. And as you can see, our screen is now fully dark, left to right, no more lines are left. So we've got now our, our screen in perfect shape. So the next step is you're going to want to take some double sided tape and you're going to want to apply it back to this rubber piece because you're going to want to reinstall it to make sure to keep that pressure on the screen. So after replacing the strip, I always do another test just to make sure my screen comes back fully black. Everything's looking good. So now it's a simple task of replacing everything in the Game Boy and screwing everything back together. By the way, if you didn't uh, notice, uh, the LED is actually working. The reason why it wasn't showing up when I was turning on the Game Boy earlier is because the battery pack was actually so low on battery that the LED was showing that basically no battery was left, although it had just enough to turn on the screen. So that's why it wasn't showing up. So we lucked out. We don't actually need to switch the LED, but if we had, it's actually really simple. We would have just had to desolder the LED right here and replace it with a fresh one. So now with our Game Boy back together, uh, let's turn it on and we have a beautiful full screen. And if we adjust the contrast, pop Kirby in here and we have our game functioning in perfect shape. All our buttons should be functional. So we have our D-pad left, right, down, A, B, start and select. Everything is working so our Game Boy is back to perfect shape. So for half an hour of work, I now have two completely functional classic DMG Game Boys. Both are in excellent shape and actually I have some backlight kits coming in. So do keep tuned to the channel because we're going to be doing that on both Game Boys in probably uh, the next week or two. We're going to be pu putting out the video of backlighting both these kits with two different colors. So if you're interested in seeing how to backlight a Game Boy, do keep tuned for the channel. I hope you guys did like this video on how to repair vertical lines. By the way, just a quick mention, this will not work for horizontal lines. For horizontal lines, unfortunately, the cable is soldered to the back of the screen and it's glued rather than soldered, so it's actually not going to help. So if you have horizontal screens, on uh, lines, sorry, unfortunately, there's no real fix that I know of to fixing that, but for vertical lines, as you can see, it's really easy and it's nothing to stress about. So if you see a Game Boy in, with a really good price with some vertical lines, pick it up, take some time, and you'll have a perfect working one on your hands. So as usual, I hope you liked and appreciated the video. Please do like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. And like I said, keep tuned for the follow-up, because like I said, the backlighting of these Game Boys will be even more interesting. So thank you very much again, and I'll see you in my next video.